Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Praise be to Allah alone. We all praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves us say, none can show Him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, welcome to another live edition of your program, Ask Huda. A quick reminder with our phone numbers and contact informations, beginning with area code 00202. Uh, 888, uh, 248, 248 or 249 and the uh, email address is ask at and alternatively gardens at TV. Uh, the Facebook page is the R. Muhammad Salah official I had a couple of pending questions from the previous episode Sister Fatima from the KSA uh, was asking about can a woman have the power of uh, giving divorce to her husband Okay, uh, that has to be explained. Like for instance, if from the beginning, during the contract, the woman put a condition that she would have what is called al-asma, or the power of divorcing her husband. The vast majority of the fuqaha are of the view that that is invalid. Allah the Almighty gave the man uh, this power and it is not up to him to grant it to his wife as a condition because it's an invalid condition. Yet Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on him, approved this condition. But they all agreed that after marriage, if the person said to his wife, you have the right to divorce your wife, yourself if you choose so. Then in this condition, if she says, okay, I'm divorced, or I'd like to be divorced from you, that is effective. With slight differences with regards to, is this um, permission open and unlimited at any time she can utilize it or only limited to a certain time and place like somebody says him and his wife is having a conflict and she keeps saying that divorce me divorce me he says okay it's up to you if you want to divorce your wife you have the power to divorce if you want to divorce yourself you have the power to divorce yourself so many of the scholars such as Imam Malik or Imam Shafi'i said then this grant and this power of divorce which he granted her will be only limited to the meeting. So if she did not utilize it, she cannot utilize it later on, like in another day or another occasion. Uh, Sister Hafiza from Kuwait said, while in the haram and it is extremely crowded, what if the person loses the, his or her wudu? Uh, what would be the, the, the minimum wudu which would suffice because you know that going outside the haram is very problematic especially nowadays with the construction and uh, in, during most times once you exit the haram you won't be able to enter back like you know half hour before the prayer they seal the doors and so on okay number one there are wudu areas designated wudu areas only for the wudu from zamzam water within the haram itself. So you can utilize that and make wudu. And women have designated areas so that they would not fold their sleeves before men or take off their hijab before men. And if there is none, then they cannot do that before men. Number two, avoiding the wudu was simply as a result of baking wind or passing gas. The good news is that it is not required to do istinja, which is washing your private after passing wind or baking gas, only after answering the call of nature, like doing number one or number two, your nation or defecation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Amina from United Arab Emirates, welcome to Ask Huda. Assalamu alaikum, Amina. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, sister. Okay, uh, I just have a question because uh, I'm a revert in Islam and then my, my mother. Uh, she's uh, in my home country, and she's not a Muslim, okay? So now my husband, uh, we are sending her like a money because my, my mother is a widow. So I'm sending her like a monthly allowance 
Uh, and then uh, when I went to vacation, I just found out that my mother, she had a loan. So she had a loan wherein the money that I'm sending her, she's using some of it to pay the loan, which has interest. So I just want to ask, is it, uh, what's this? Is it, is it uh, haram for us to send her money or or? Am I sinning if I'm sending her money and she's using it to pay off, you know, the loans that has riba on it? Okay. So that's my question. Thank you, Sister Amina. Barakallah fiki. What you're doing is great. May Allah the Almighty accept from you supporting your non-Muslim mother and paying her because she cannot afford to support herself is not just recommended, it is mandatory. It is your duty towards your mother. Allah the Almighty ordered the believers to look after their parents and be dutiful to them even if they were non-believers. So supporting her financially is your duty and also helping her to settle her debt or loan is your duty as well if she can't do it. Thank you, Sister Amina. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Hawa from Nigeria. I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Sister Hawa. Go ahead, please. My question is regarding the menstrual period. I read from one of the books that a brownish discharge signifies the end of a period. So if it stops in the daytime, what prayer is one responsible on observing? And if it's after the sunset, uh, which among the prayers is one responsible to observe? Okay. So Any other questions? Huh? That's Any... all. Okay. Thank you, Sister Hawa from Nigeria. Okay. Talking about uh, what would you do if you avoid your wudu in the haram while it is very crowded, it is very hard to step out and make wudu and come back, especially if you were in the middle of your tawaf. So I'm going to elaborate furthermore on uh, different circumstances. Uh, in tawaf, if you avoid your wudu, you step out, you make wudu, and come back to resume from the same spot if you mark down where you start at, where did you avoid your wudu. If you forgot, you can as well begin a new round from the black stone corner. You want to begin the whole circumambulation or tawaf from the very beginning. That is perfectly fine. It is permissible uh, as well. Um, the good news is, number one, it is not needed to do istinja or wash your prophets as a result of bacon wind. Number two, that the Prophet ﷺ performed wudu once by washing the body parts which Allah ordered to be washed in ayah number 6 of Surah Al-Ma'idah once, sometimes twice, sometimes three times which means the fard is to do it once so a, a, a glass of water will be more than sufficient for you to perform wudu if you're asking about the minimum Simply, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَغْسِلُوا وَجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ وَامْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ Verse number 6, chapter Al-Ma'idah. Where you need to wash your face in addition to rinsing your mouth and uh, your nose as well. And washing the entire face once. That is sufficient. This is what is mandatory. Then, وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ Your arms up to the elbows once. Then, Wipe with your hands over your heads and your ears once. And wash your feet up to the ankles once. That is the minimum requirement and this is the fard. And that would make your wudu 100% valid insha'Allah azza wa jal. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Hafidha from the KSA. Yeah, uh, Sheikh, Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Um, the question I have is, um, can a woman divorce her husband because he's married to a second wife in Islam? And how would she divorce her husband, Sister Hafidha? I don't know, because I know some women ask for divorce because their husband has decided to marry a second wife. Then is basically, the question is, can a woman ask for a divorce? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Because in the beginning of today's edition, I spoke about the permissibility of giving the power of divorce to the wife, whether from yeah. the beginning as a condition in the contract initially or afterward. So that is okay. explained. Now, 
uh, a woman who may ask for divorce without a valid reason that's a major sin the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned the woman in a serious hadith against seeking divorce without a legitimate reason but now if the person married another wife is this a legitimate reason let's look into it well if he's fair if he's just if he's written both fairly and if he's uh, not oppressing his wife if he is not uh, lacking behind in fulfilling her rights then she doesn't have the right to ask for a divorce because he did not commit a sin according to what the Quran says that is permissible right that is permissible but if the wife believes that life with this person has become impossible she cannot tolerate living with him she may resort to something which is called khula فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا فِي مَفْتَدَتْ بِهِ The Quran says, then, in case of fear of conflict, and she wants out, then there is no blame upon them both if they agree to um, a resolution, which would require the woman to give up on her financial rights, such as the dowry and the deferred amount of the dowry, and so on. And that happened during the life of the Prophet ﷺ with the wife of Thabit ibn Qais. But simply asking for a divorce to punish the husband or because he dared to take another wife <clears throat> without really being affected, without uh, uh, receiving any mistreatment or harsh uh, treatment from the husband, uh, that is under the category of seeking divorce without a legitimate reason. Uh, <clears throat> Sister Nabila from United Arab Emirates, what is the maximum paid of the post-delivery bleeding? Akhtar al nifas is 40 days. What does it mean? Sister's question is very specific. Some women after giving birth, the bleeding which follows uh, the delivery may last for a few days, may last for a couple of weeks, may last for 40 days, may last for beyond that. And many people are under the impression that, that the nifas or the postpartum bleeding is 40 days, which means that even though the bleeding would cease and she will be clean, but still she would not pray and she would not fast, waiting for the 40 days to elapse. That is not right. The maximum period, the 40 days, means that if the bleeding is continuous, past the 40 days, then the woman should treat this bleeding as an irregular bleeding, which means she will be eligible to take a bath for the purification and offer the prayers, but with each prayer she must make an independent wudu once the prayer, of, uh, once the prayer time has entered. Because the bleeding past the 40 days will be called istihada, or irregular bleeding except if this time or the past 40 days coincide her regular period time so she would wait for the same time seven days eight days whatever number of days that she used to experience of the period assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brother zaki from egypt wa alaikum salam sheikh how are you brother zaki alhamdulillah i'm fine uh... I have one question today. Yeah, please. And uh, my question is regarding, uh, I was actually interested in starting up a business. In, and uh, I was actually planning to have a business that that serves food, food items. Yeah. You know, but a few episodes back, I uh, saw one of your answers uh, wherein you were discussing about like the hazards of um, the recent trend of fast food chain of restaurants. Mine again, it's not like those kind of a fast food restaurant, but again, I am planning to serve like something like donut or some sweets like that. Again, it's not the most healthy thing, or in fact, it's an unhealthy product in one day. Just as a snack, I'm planning to start a business. So is it advisable, or should I like abstain from doing such a thing? Okay, Barakallah Feek, Brother Zaki. Thank you so much for inquiring about whether it's halal or haram beforehand. Number one, it is halal. 
provided that the food that you offer and you're calling from uh, a Muslim country, provided that the food and the ingredients are halal, then your business is halal. When I was speaking about um, the side effects and the disadvantage of eating the fast food because it's not healthy, it doesn't mean it is prohibited or it is haram. Uh, a few times, me and my family traveling on the road or the kids want this particular food. Okay, we'll grab it if we know that this is halal. But it is not healthy to maintain eating this kind of food. But it is halal. What matters is that it is halal. And donut is halal. There are a lot of people who would only eat donuts in the morning. <clears throat> okay? In, in, in the Middle East, they would eat donuts as sweet after meals. So your food which you're offering is halal, then your job is halal. As far as whether you should go for it or not, that to be determined based on two things. Number one, praying istikhara. Number two, consulting business expertise. Okay, barakallah feek and may Allah make you successful in your business and make it profitable for you. Allahumma ameen. <coughs> Sister Nabila's second question from United Arab Emirates. At the time of uh, uh, sleep or while going to bed that if you have minors would it be sufficient to recite the adhkar for all of them at once or that you have to recite for each one well it will be sufficient if you recite for all of them like if they're all sleeping in the same room it will benefit them all inshallah because it has been reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say with the guys to reciting the adhkar and giving the ruqya to his grandsons, Al-Hasan al Hussein, it has been narrated that he used to say, أُعِيذُكُمَا بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّةِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ وَهَامَّةِ وَمِنْ كُلِّ عَيْنٍ لَامَّةِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ أُعِيذُكُمَا means I seek refuge in Allah for both of you. So this is the reference. أُعِيذُكُمَا if I do have plenty of time to recite Al-Mu'awwidhat and wipe with my hands over the head and the body of every child, go ahead and, and do it. But because we all have kids and we understand that while going to bed and preparing uh, to wrap up the day in order to get up early for another day in school and so on, it will be sufficient to recite the adhkar for all the kids if they are in one place. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. <coughs> Brother Ridwan from Nigeria, and I believe that is the last pending question we have, that he said um, that we mentioned before in a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ used to pray the sunnah at home, and then he would go out to the masjid to attend the congregational prayer. Then he would save the sunnah to offer it at home. Awfully, okay. So he's saying that if we go to perform hajj or umrah, would that apply there that we should offer the sunnah like in the hotel room or wherever? The situation is different. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Salatun fi masjidi hadha ta'adilu alfa salatin fi ma siwa illa al masjid al haram. And this is a sound hadith which means offering one single prayer in my masjid. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was talking about his masjid, the prophetic masjid in Medina. One single prayer that you offer there, whether it's fard or nafl, is 1,000 times superior to offering the same prayer anywhere else. The same prayer you offer in al-masjid al-nabawi is better than praying the same prayer, asr prayer, sunnah before asr, sunnah before after uh, uh, tahajjud, is a thousand times better than praying the same prayer anywhere else on earth except in al-masjid al-haram. In the case of Al-Masjid Al-Haram, <coughs> that it is a hundred thousand times better. And that's why the scholars understood from that, that with regards to the prophetic masjid in Medina, the prayer must be offered inside the masjid. Those who come late and they pray in the front yard or the backyard outside the doors of the masjid, they will not be eligible for this one thousand times better word. Why? 
because the Prophet ﷺ specified, he said, in my masjid, what about the expansion? Whenever there is an expansion, the first expansion was at the time of Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, in the year, uh, I believe, 35, after the migration of the Prophet ﷺ, that is inside the masjid, that counts as praying inside the masjid. Then there have been further expansions, and now it's going further more up to the hotels area. As long as it is within the boundaries of the masjid, and the walls and the doors, that counts as inside the masjid. It should be fard and nafl. So I shouldn't waste an opportunity of praying even the nafl before or after the fard prayer uh, in the hotel room, or outside the masjid, rather, to be inside the masjid. With regards to al-haram in Mecca, the scholars have a different opinion. They said, Al-Haram in Mecca is the whole Mecca, not just the Kaaba and Al-Masjid. What's your reference? They said it's in Surah Al-Isra. Allah the Almighty says, Subhan al-ladhi asra bi'abidihi laylam min al-Masjid al-Harami ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa al-ladhi barakna hawlahu linuriyahu min ayatina. Glory be to the one who took his servant, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a night journey from where? Al-Masjid al-Haram. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asleep at his house. He was not in Al-Masjid Al-Haram. So they understood that Al-Masjid Al-Haram covers the whole Mecca area, the whole sanctuary of Mecca. Il Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Because of that, they said, if you pray anywhere in Mecca, you will be given this reward. That's why the most sacred city on earth is Mecca al mukarrama So if you pray in the hotel, if you pray in another masjid, yes, you will be receiving the multiple reward, but still offering the prayer in the Kaaba, in the masjid of the Kaaba, has a greater reward, of course. So, for the hujjaj, for the pilgrims, and for the mu'tamireen, and the visitors, you should seize this opportunity and make sure that you offer all the prayers in Al-Haram. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Fatima from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Fatima. Uh, Sheikh, I have two questions. No. Uh, the first question is, is there a collective dua that I can make for the entire Ummah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because I really feel in short of words when I see what things are happening around for my brothers and sisters. Mm. So is there something that I can do on my behalf sitting at inside my house with the comfort. I cannot offer that to them, but I would like to make dua, a strong dua, please, reckon me some dua. No, sure, inshallah. The second question is, um, when I'm very soon going to return back to my home country, which is India, and uh, I would like to start up a home-based business for cake decoration and uh, cake baking. Uh, I understand that it's uh, non-Muslim country and the orders that would come will mostly be for birthday cakes and uh, Christmas and you know all the things that we don't celebrate or uh, we are not interested in. Is this okay to do? Um, will this be uh, wrong on me being a one who doesn't celebrate but uh, can I take up such orders? And the second thing is most of the cake decoration orders that you get are like for kids with uh, cartoon characters and um, animals and such things. So uh, will this also be wrong? Or should I think of some <coughs> other uh, aspects of business? All right. Thank you, Sister Fatima. Barakallahu um, feeki. Prophet Nuh, alayhi salam, and Prophet um, Abraham, peace be upon all of them. There have been invocations in the Qur'an such as رَبِّ فِلِّي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Which means, my Lord, forgive me my sins and forgive my parents and forgive all the believers, men and women. وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Believing men and believing women. This dua is stemming from the Qur'an. So it is with regards to seeking forgiveness for the whole Ummah. By analogy, you can simply ask Allah to sit right all the affairs of the entire Ummah. Of the entire Ummah. Such as, Allahumma aslih ahwal al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat. 
O Allah, I all the affairs of the believing men and women. Allahum mansur al-Islam wa aiz al-Muslimin. O Allah, give victory to Islam and to the Muslims. Similar du'as of protection, of enrichment, of guidance, of God in the Ummah, of uniting the Ummah. اللهم ألف بين قلوب المؤمنين. These du'as are all like have similar, not necessarily invocations in the Quran, but inspired by the Quran. إنما المؤمنون إخوة. The believers are but brothers. اللهم ألف بين قلوب المؤمنين. اللهم اجمع شمل المسلمين. Oh Allah, unite the ummah. Things of this nature which you can face on your own. But the two du'as which I uh, uh, mentioned, like the du'a in Surah Ibrahim and the other du'a of Prophet Nuh السلام, uh, of praying for the whole ummah, is highly recommended. And the good news is that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that whenever you pray for somebody, you'll be rewarded for that. So when you say, Oh Allah, forgive me, forgive my parents, and all the believing men and women, walil mu'minin wal mu'minat, you know, you're making du'a for all the believers. And not only those who are alive during this time, but those who have ever lived since Allah created uh, the heavens and the earth, which we're talking about literally trillions of good deeds in a simple dua, which I highly encourage people and the believers particularly to pay attention to such invocations in their prayer. Barakallahu feekum. Um, I think we'll take a short break, inshallah, azzajal. And we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. Imagine that the NBA, they were the ones, they were the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they had the hardest life. He assumed that he had some kind of superiority and he was a better, more chosen, more, you know, a select, better person because he had this wealth. And then you look at all the other people who had wealth and some of them were the worst people. He had Fir'aun, Fir'aun and uh, uh, Reviving your niyyah time and again, time and again, uh, that you're doing insincerely for the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most of the youth, they think, Oh, I'm going to pray when I'm old. It's okay now. I'll have fun. Have fun in my life. Later on, I'll work. I'll go on my bed. I'll pray five times a day. And all these things. They think that that's later on in their life. And they don't know when and when, when they will die. But I mean, who's your role model? Khadija radiallahu And why? Because she was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uh, wife. And she was the first lady to believe in Islam. Uh -huh. We can't just take knowledge and keep it as information. We have to transfer it into action. When he got up, he said one thing. Did the people pray? In Hajj, for example, the, the, the primary example of how multiculturalism really looks like, all equal. I've got a dentist in Canada. Even though he's ripping holes in my teeth, he's got great akhlaq. I love visiting him. Identify the issue. Analyze it. Challenge it. And then try again. Because if you fail, big deal. Try again and keep trying. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. I believe we do have uh, Sister Hawa from Nigeria first uh, with regards to whenever the woman 
experiences the purification after the period, which prayer should she make up? Well, during the period, a woman doesn't have to make up any missed prayer. But once she witnessed the purity and she took the ghusl, then she is required to make the prayer which she attended the tuh during its time. Let me make it uh, easier by giving an example. A woman who experienced the tuhr um, after the dhuhr prayer and before asr, then she is required to pray dhuhr. Why? Because she is still in time. What about if she experienced the tuhr? And a tuhr means seizing the bleeding and experiencing the purification. So the period is over. Okay. She did experience a tuhr before sunset. Then there is one opinion which says she must only make up the prayer of this time, which is Asr. And there is a very well respected opinion. Many, many scholars are of the view that she must make up the prayer of this time and the prayer which normally is joined with it if the person is allowed to join two prayers. So during the daytime, she would pray Dhuhr and Asr. If she ever experiences Dhuhr before sunset, so she must pray Dhuhr and pray Asr in order. And if she experiences a Dhuhr after sunset, then she must only pray Maghrib. But if she experiences Dhuhr after the Isha prayer and before Fajr, they say then she must pray Maghrib and Isha because at night the two prayers are normally joined together if the person is traveling or due to necessity. So this is a very well-respected uh, opinion. Sister uh, Fatima, um, who asked about that, inshallah, opinion, uh, bakery business and baking cakes and all of that. Well, we have an ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah, which I normally say, this ayah is an answer to like 60-70% of the questions particularly in business transaction. Halal or haram. The ayah says, وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ It's a part of an ayah. It, you know, the, the balance is, Allah the Almighty says, help one another to achieve righteousness and good deeds. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى Yet, وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ And do not help one another in committing sins and in transgression and fear Allah because Allah is severe in punishment. So how do we use this ayah to answer your question? We'll see. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Husna from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. Uh, Sheikh, I have two questions. Please go ahead. Uh, the first one is after you finish praying, the time when you're making dua, and you're facing Qibla, is it okay to stretch your legs, but while covered? Okay. And then the second question is, uh, I heard from someone uh, saying that uh, the aliens exist, that Allah created them, and they, have, they live in their own world, and their world and our world will never meet. So is this true? Okay. Any other questions, Sister Hosni? Thank you, Sheikh. You're most welcome. Okay. With regards to your first question, oh, um, I was answering another question, the cake. Um, so if you want to know whether what you're doing is halal or haram, let's look into the ayah. Am I helping in doing anything which is haram? Somebody opened um, a booth in the mall only during the Christmas to sell some items. So he asked me, and this is in the States, is it halal? I said, it is halal. But why are you selling? He said, antiques and gifts. I said, okay, it is halal. As long as the item itself or the items themselves are lawful, no problem. Being bought by Muslims, by non-Muslims, you know, people buy knives and guns, either to use a knife in the kitchen or to kill somebody. How do I know? I don't. Okay. But if I know for sure the only or the sole usage of this item is in haram, then it's not permissible, such as I figure that he's selling items like statues of Mary, of Jesus, and crosses. No, there are 
text in this regard that it is prohibited. You're not allowed to sell crosses. You're not allowed to sell statues. You're not allowed to sell dogs, even if they are pets, you know. So in this case, it is not permissible. Selling a cake, which I would say happy Christmas and, and so on on it. We did talk about this before repeatedly. Normally, every uh, Christmas, we speak about giving the congratulation with the Christmas. What does this Christmas signify? It signifies the birth of Jesus and so on, whom they believe that he is God. So this is a concept that entirely contradicts our faith. We don't believe in the cross. We don't believe in the death of Jesus, peace be upon him, that he was elevated, he was not crucified. And we believe that Jesus, the son of Mary, was born uh, out of a miraculous birth. He doesn't have a father. And Allah doesn't have a son. So participating and propagating this belief is also blameworthy. But giving cakes for parties and uh, weddings and graduation and all of that, this is perfectly halal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Fatima from the KSA. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, is it permissible for us to eat uh, food given by Shia Muslim? She is one of our neighbors. She gives uh, food uh, often. But I heard that it is not permissible because they sometimes they spit in that food. And, uh, what what kind of food, Sister Fatima? Uh, like uh, the normal food uh, which they are preparing uh, in her house. Like okay. a special food like that. Okay. You're calling from the KSA. If I uh -huh. have Shia neighbors, and I have, if I have Christians uh, in, uh, in the compound living with me, and they invited me for food, I would eat. I would say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and I would eat. Why? Because all the meat which is slaughtered there is slaughtered lawfully. It's a Muslim country, right? But now, whenever we're living abroad, I have to investigate. You know, especially when I know that there are some people I saw, you know, you have been following me. Uh, the last week I have several requests. Now it has become a demand that what is the ruling on the Shia and the different sects and so on. Normally I used to give a brief answer. But I have some horrible videos. Just watch one recently that uh, one of the scholars, I said there are many sects. They are not all equal. One of the scholars, and I will be more than happy to show you a part of this video, saying that Ali, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, Ali radiyallahu an, is a prophet's cousin. He's one of uh, the rightly guided khulafa, and he's a prophet's uh, son-in-law. And Ali radiyallahu an is one of the ten heaven-bound companions. They said that he's God himself, and on the day of judgment, he's the one who's going to account us, because he will be the Lord on the day of judgment. Uh, such person, I can't eat their meat if they ever slaughter, because they're not Muslims. It's very obvious. We initially said that those who say that Ali is a prophet are non-Muslims. Those who say that Ali is God, definitely are non-Muslims, like, like Christians. So in this case, uh, if... It is in a non-Muslim country, I have to investigate. In a Muslim country, and I know that they buy the meat from the stores, uh, available everywhere, slaughtered Islamically, I would eat. Because it was only the matter of cooking. Barakallah fiki. And the sole reason why I accept their gifts and I give them gifts is in order to give them da'wah, tell them what is monotheism all about, what is Islam, because a lot of people were born in a certain way and grew up this way and they have no idea whatsoever about their own religion. So when you speak to them, and logically speaking, then support your proofs from the Quran and the Sunnah, and it makes sense, many of them come back to their senses and they initially accept Islam because they were not Muslims before. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Arshia from Qatar. Yeah. Now yeah, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Sister Arshia, please. Hello? Now I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, my question is actually every year I travel to my country for one month. Hello? I hear you. Go ahead, please continue. Yeah. Uh, so, 
at this time my husband won't be able to travel with me so is it permissible that i can travel alone okay barakallahu yeah. feek thank you sister husna from the case i had a couple questions um i only remember one of them um this is what i recorded in writing the one which is after the prayer and a woman is making dua or after the prayer she stretches out her legs and uh, or towards the qibla and she said that uh, i will be covering my um, legs is it permissible it is permissible whether covering your legs or not facing the qibla lying down towards the qibla giving your back towards the qibla stretching out your legs towards the qibla even in the masjid and even if you're sitting in front of the kaaba is halal is permissible and why i'm smiling because um i saw a few things in the haram for instance if somebody is sitting and you know that when you sit in the haram you got a place especially in ramadan you make sure that you don't move from your place lest you lose it so people need to stretch out so if somebody stretched out his legs somebody will say haram that's not permissible respect the kaaba says who that searching your legs is not a respect to the kaaba we follow and do not innovate it's either something allah said it his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it the companions understood it from the prophet or you know don't make your own legislation uh, so people just to avoid the hassle and the argument in the haram they fold their legs then once again somebody was sitting and he rested his back against one of the poles in the haram and he gave his back to the kaaba oh my god another person this time from turkey he um, really was very harsh on him and said how could you ever turn your back to the kaaba so i'm not allowed to stretch my legs to the kaaba give my back to the kaaba why it's just a building it's sacred because it represents the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you can give your back to the kaaba no problem you can when you finish your your tawaf and sa'a and you leave in the haram there's a very weird practice that some people go backward they don't walk forward why they say you can give your back to the kaaba that's an innovation you think that this is like an extra respect that's not accepted because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said follow and do not innovate aliens remember the question alhamdulillah sister husna second question about aliens uh, are there aliens <laughs> there are many other creatures whom we do not know about and they are all to us aliens as we are to them aliens as a matter of fact allah says in the quran وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ and he creates what you know not do you think that we are even aware of creatures which are living amongst us no إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ the jinn satan and the jinn the species they can see us and we can see them look at this ayah وَالْخَيْلَ وَالْبِغَالَ وَالْحَمِيرَ لِتَرْكَبُوهَا وَزِينَةً He gave an example of the cattle, horses, mules, donkeys, in order to ride them and as adornments. And he creates what you know not, what you do not know. I remember in the lab, while taking a T-section for a plant, any plant that exists on earth, the green leaves, then you have to apply like chlorohydrates in order to decolorize the plant and boil it on a slide over a flame and then apply certain dyes then enjoy enjoy looking under the microscope you see another world like living creatures another world because of that you're able to distinguish this plant from the other plant so in the final uh, the professor would bring like different plants from different fields and crush them and grind them into powder mix them together like five seven different plants and he would give us samples and say what is in the powder and we would just do the same test and through the diagnostic characteristics and the features of each plant what is very diagnostic 
what is very famous in each plant, we can say, yeah, there is a uh, nigella sadaiva, there is a uh, mint, there is uh, whatever. Subhanallah. So amongst us, the bacteria, the microorganisms, the virus. So when we say, are there aliens? I'm pretty sure there are other creation. It is not only limited to us. What are they? How about their lives? Do they have messengers? Uh, do they believe in Allah? Do they eat like us? Is none of your business. We want to explore that. Just explore your own world. Know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have created you for and fulfill it. Then stop asking unnecessary questions because number one, it's a waste of time. Number two, you have no verification nor confirmations whatsoever. I, I added in some books sometimes these informations are being used politically to distract the attention of the people and create like uh, an environment that people will be overwhelmed with things which nobody have seen, nobody can confirm. Um, now, uh, Sister Aisha, if a man will get so many whores in Al Jannah, she means whores. Um, it reminds me with the people in Mecca when they say haram, haram, you mean haram, uh, but just switching the ha to ha. Haram is a pyramid and haram is a sanctuary. So hours, plural of al hurul ain the beautiful women whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created specially for the dwellers of paradise to enjoy in Jannah. In any case, where will his wife be? Well, if she's a believer, she will be his wife as well in paradise. But would she ever compete with those beautiful women? Yes, she will be the beauty queen of all of them. She will be the beauty. And uh, Surah Al-Rahman, in uh, correct recitation, we explain about al hurul Ain in the two different sets of gardens. Sister Arshia, before we wrap it up, uh, Traveling alone for a woman without a mahram. The Prophet ﷺ forbade that and he said that if a woman truly believes in Allah and in the last day she shouldn't travel alone without a male mahram of her. Okay. But I normally say what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَمَنِ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ During necessities and there is no blame on you to undertake such journey with trying to minimize the risk, like the person who drove you to the airport and another relative would pick you off from the airport and make sure it's a direct uh, flight. But this is not like uh, um, an open invitation to do it all the time. Rather, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, only due to necessity. But besides that, the Prophet's statement is valid 1400 years ago and until the Day of Judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Brothers and sisters, by that we come to the end of today's edition of Ask Huda. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us all what we don't know and to help us to understand, comprehend, and act upon what we learn. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. And until next week, I leave you in the care of Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah is my heart's 